Hi, I'm Art Ringus, technical writer at Ixiosoft. Starting with desktop and now with web, I've been using the Ixiosoft CCMS for over half a decade, and I'll be the host of today's Ixiodocs video. The Ixiodocs series will look at a few of the new features in Ixiosoft CCMS web and give an overview of how they work. The aim is to give you a quick sense of how it works and what you can do with it. Today, I'm going to take a quick look at one of the new features for writers in Ixiosoft CCMS Web 6, the Fork and Edit Dialogs for the Dynamic Release Management Module, or DRM. If you'd use DRM, you'll definitely like this new feature. With the Fork and Edit Dialogs, it's straightforward to know which topics you're editing in what branch. Now, some quick background about the Dynamic Release Management Module. In DRM, topics are in branches. When you edit a topic, you can choose whether to edit the topic across all the branches the topic is in, or only some branches. Editing the topic in all branches means that any changes you make appear in all the branches that the topic is in, across the entire continuum of documentation. But, if you choose to edit the topic in only some branches, then the topic is forked. The topic in the branches that you select is replaced by a copy, a new instance of the topic in which you can make edits. In all of those other branches you didn't select, the same old topic continues to exist independently. So further updates for the new instance or the original topic are only for the new instance or original topic. Let's see how this works when editing a topic in a map assigned to you. In CCMS Web, you can see the edit icon beside the topics here. That means these topics are assigned to me and are in a status where I can edit them. Now, to edit a topic, I click the edit icon. Now, if my topic was in only one available branch, when I click the edit icon, I jump straight to the topic editor. There'd be nothing else I need to do, and I could spend the rest of the day feeling lucky that sometimes documentation can be that simple. But, if my topic is in multiple branches, when I click Edit, the Fork and Edit dialog appears. This dialog lets me control when and how to make edits to a topic. The default setting for editing is to select all the branches. So right now, I would be editing the topic in all the branches. As soon as I deselect a branch, it automatically switches to Fork and Edit. Now I'm editing the topic in only the selected branches. You can also see that at the top, it shows that I'm on screen 1 of 2. Here I am choosing the branches, and if I click Next, here I need to select the context map. The context map is used to resolve keys, confs, and do some other things, so picking the right context map can be important. Depending on the branches I select, my possible choices for context map can change. Here, you see that I now have two different possible context maps to choose from. If there are a lot of maps, I can use a search to look for the one I want, and, if like this, it's hard to tell them apart, I can click on the card to get more info. For instance, these two have different IDs and file names. And, as you can see, I can go back and forth as many times as I want. No new instances are created until I click Edit. Now, once you've made up your mind, pick which branches to edit or fork and edit it, and a context map for any new instance, and then click Edit. Same button in both screens. The topic editor opens. Now, you can edit the topic as normal. When you go to check in the topic, it either updates the topic across all the branches it appears in, or just the ones you selected, as you decided on in the dialog. So no nightmares about the wrong info ending up in the wrong guide. Now, before I talk about forking, there's one little difference I should point out. Editing a topic through search, you always have to pick the context map. This is because in search, the topic doesn't yet have a context to resolve keys through. Things you find in search can come from anywhere, so you need to tell it what context to use. In some cases, you cannot add a topic in all the branches it appears in because one or more branches are unavailable. Branches can be unavailable because the branch is closed, the topic is in the wrong status, or other things like that. When this happens, you must fork and edit the topic. But, even when you have to fork the topic, you can still choose which available branches to fork it in, if the topic is in more than one available branch. As you'll see, the easiest way to tell if you have to fork the topic is to watch for the fork icon. Think fork in the road, not salad fork. So, if you click the fork icon, the fork and edit dialog appears again. But this time, everything starts deselected, and you pick which branches you want to fork in. And you can't pick all the branches. Now, once you have the branches you want, you click next, and then pick the context map you want. In this case, there are a lot of maps, so I'm going to search by ID. Then, I just pick the context map of the branch I want, and click 
fork and edit. And the topic editor opens. Now you can edit the topic as normal. One last thing, all new instances created by forking a topic start unassigned to any user. Even if you were assigned to the original topic or are the one doing the forking, the new instance is not automatically assigned to you. On the other hand, any user assigned to the original topic is still assigned to the original topic as long as the assignment is still valid after you fork the topic. For example, Archie is assigned to topic A in branch 1 and branch 2 as a writer. When he forks topic A in branch 2 and branch 3, topic A is no longer assigned to him in branch 2. The assignment is not valid because he was not assigned to the new instance in branch 2 and the original topic does not exist in branch 2 anymore. But branch 1 is fine, it's still the same old topic. That's all for the fork and edit dialogues. As you saw, they're a useful tool for anyone working in DRM. You don't need to spend your time worrying about copies and new instances. All you need to decide is where to edit the topics in all branches or some branches, and the system takes care of the rest.